A thermal power plant using the Rankine cycle requires a phase change. Traditionally, this has been liquid water heated to steam and then condensed back to a liquid. During this condensation process, the steam expands, spins a turbine, which in turn drives a generator, and for all intents and purposes, we've got electricity. Unfortunately, this is simply not possible with the lower temperatures that we're expecting via heating our black body, you know, via asphalt or our evacuated tubes. What we can do, however, is replace the water, dubbed the working fluid of the system, with another liquid that has a much lower boiling point. The team tested six of these potential working fluids. Three of them were environmentally safe refrigerants that have shown success in Rankine cycle applications and are already used in residential settings. Of these, two may sound very familiar, isobutane and freon. Two other working fluids were more volatile. Ammonia and propane acted as a benchmark for achievable power, but they aren't realistic in a residential setting. Finally, the last one, carbon dioxide, did not prove to be a viable working fluid within our specifications. How we tested these is that we ran them through a simulation called DWSIM, and we crunched the numbers of their thermodynamic properties via a MATLAB function that we developed. We used these to determine what temperature gradient we would need to produce at least one kilowatt of power. The lowest common denominator of this temperature gradient was 38 degrees Celsius. As we ran the DWSIM simulation and through our MATLAB function, we also determined the required pump power and the thermal efficiency we can expect of the system. The thermal efficiency gives us an idea of how much thermal energy that we need to pull from the black body to ensure power generation. Our MATLAB function also gave us a look at the fluid's temperature entropy diagrams, also known as their TS curves, which is shown behind me here. On my right, you'll see the TS diagram of ammonia, which looks more like the TS diagram of water. Uh, if you see the blue curve, anything on the blue curve is water. Anything underneath the blue or the red is a mix of water and steam or liquid and vapor. So when we see if ammonia, the way our setting works, we get to three, it's a vapor. And then as it condenses down to four, it's a mixed steam until it goes back to its liquid phase. So what that tells us is we could use a fluid pump in this setting. However, to my left is uh, the TS diagram for Freon, which is one of the three refrigerants and all three of the refrigerants had similar TS diagrams. They're unique in the way that that red side of the curve that you see falls off. And you see the way it falls off as three goes to four, we're now outside of that red curve. So instead of being a mixed liquid and steam, we're now superheated steam. This tells us two things. One, these refrigerants don't do better if you put more power into them, pressurizing them. And two, we would need to use a pump that has dry fluid pumping capabilities if we were to use these refrigerants.